everyone, it's Miss Rossi. Today we are going to start a weaving project. What you'll be needing today is all of your weaving materials from your art club folder. So you should have some different yarns. You should have the world's smallest ball of white yarn. You should have your weaving board. We're also going to need a piece of tape and I have a scissor here just in case. So today we are going to create a weaving on our board. Now our board has slots all along the top and along the bottom. And the first thing we're going to do today is wrap our board so that we can create our weaving. So we need to wrap our loom to create our warp and then we can add the rest of our fun colors woven in there as our weft. I'm first going to look on my board and make sure that all of my little sections are cut through. So you might need to kind of bend your cardboard a little bit just to open up these areas. Like I can see that mine didn't get fully cut through so I can just bend it back and forth a little bit to break that last section that is still on there so all of my pieces are individual sections. I'm going to grab my world's smallest ball of yarn and I'm going to start at the top where I am going to count two sections over. So I have this first rectangle and that second one and I am going to tuck my string into that second slot. So I had one, two slots and I'm tucking it in there. I am leaving a short tail on the back. You can take a little piece of tape and tape that tail down so it doesn't move, or you can just let it hang. Our cardboard is pretty tight, so it is probably not going to come undone. So now I have my long piece hanging across the front, and I have my short tail on the back, and I started in that second notch. I am going to take my string and bring it all the way down to that second notch that is along the bottom of my board. I'm going to tuck it in there. And now my long string is hanging down the back. Still looking at the front of my board, I have that nice straight line going all the way and I have it nice and tight. I am going to take my string and I am going to come up from behind. And again, I am going to skip one notch and pop my string out the next one. So we're doing every other section. So inside each loop we're making, there should be two little notches in there. So I had my string from the back, and from the back I am coming out towards the front. I am not wrapping my string around and around my board because that is going to waste our string and you won't have enough. I'm going to carry my string up towards the top Again, skipping a notch and tucking it in. I'm going to take my string around the back and pulling it through, again, skipping a notch and going into the next one. So we are doing this all the way down. So now I'm going back to the bottom, tucking it in. Again, every other notch, coming out from the back and back up towards the top going in, coming around the back, making sure I'm skipping a line and doing this all the way down my board. Once you get the first few in there, it's going to get a lot easier as you repeat this over and over. And you wanna be careful with your yarn so you do not knot it as you are wrapping your loom. So again, up to the top, connects from the back, and around. So this is what it looks like on the front and this is what it should look like on the back. You should just have those little loops back there. You should not have yarn coming up and down like the front. Again connecting it to the bottom, around the back, back up to the top, always skipping one notch and going to the next one from the back. And I brought it up to the top one last time. I'm going to stop there, flip this over, cut my string, and just tape it down to the back. And now we have officially wrapped our loom with our warp string. So you should get something that looks like this once you are done. The back is going to have those loops along the notches and the front should have your strings 
going vertically up and down. So now that I have my warp string all done, I can start to look at some of my weft string. Now our weft is what is going to weave in and out of our white string that we have here. I'm going to start with my bright and colorful thicker yarn. Now it is knotted, so it would not get all tangled in your folder. You can very carefully unknot it and lay it out on your table so it does not create a big old knotted mess that you'll have to untangle later on. I'm going to pull one of my strings. It doesn't matter what color you pick because we are just going to start to weave on our board. Now, when we are weaving, we are always doing that over under pattern. So my pink string is going to go over and under my white string all the way across. So I am going to start just on one end and I'm going to start by tucking my pink string underneath towards the top of my board. So I went under my first white string I'm going to go over my next one. So I'm laying my pink string across that white string. Then it is going to go underneath the next one. So I can lift up my white string with one hand and tuck my pink string under there. And again, we just went under, we're going over, then back under, over, under, over, under. over, under, and then we are going over that last string. Now I'm going to pull this all the way through so there's only a short little tail left at the end. And you can decide if you want your tail to just kind of dangle off along the edge. I want it nice and short, kind of like that. I'm tucking that yarn all the way up towards the top and I'm just going to leave a little tail there. If you want, you can tape your tail on to the back so it's not dangling off the edge. Um, or you can leave it off to the side like that. So now I have all of my long string on the other side and I'm going to continue weaving down my board. So I went over last time. So even though I am on this same starting string, I'm going to bring my pink yarn under it. So I went over, so now I'm going under it. And this is going to loop my string really nicely around the edge of my board. So I'm going to look to my next section. So I just went under, I'm going over, under, over, under, all the way across. So again, keeping up that pattern. And as you're doing this, your pink strings pattern should be opposite that first row. So you can see in this first row, I have an under, and now below it, I have an over. On the first row, I have an over, below it, I have an under. And that's going to help create are weaving. You want them to be opposites to show that your pattern is working. So I'm just going to finish off this one going over and under all the way across, pulling it through nice and tight. I don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want to pull this side in too much. And then carefully tucking it up towards the top. Now I can bring my long string back to the other side and keep going back and forth all the way down. Here I ended with an over, so I'm going to start by going under and then following my pattern all the way across, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and ending with an over. And I'm just going to pull that all the way through, tuck it up towards the top, and our weaving is coming along. Now you can keep going with your same colored string until it ends where you run out of string or you can cut it short after you get however many rows you would like cut it off and then start a new string i'm going to keep going with this pink one until it is all done and then i'm going to tie it on to my next string once i am ready to change colors <music> All right, so now it's getting too short. I won't be able to make it all the way back. If you wanna do it halfway and then change your color, you can always do that. But I'm going to stop right there. I think I'm gonna pull an orange string from my pile and I am just going to knot my two ends together so that my pink can change into my orange as I continue to weave all the way across. Now you can also just cut this and let it dangle off the edge 
um, but I want all of my colors connected so they are one solid piece by the end of it. So I am going to knot my two strings together. I am holding them so both of my ends are lined up with each other. And I'm going to take them and wrap them around two fingers. Once I have that loop around my two fingers, I am going to open my fingers so I can see the space in between and tuck those tails in there and carefully pull them out. So I made a little loop. I tucked my tails in to make my knot and now I can pull all the way. It's kind of like knotting a balloon. If you try and tie them together like you tie your shoes, it's not going to work because they will start to slip out. I'm just gonna take my scissor and trim off the extra bits there. And now I have my orange string connected to my pink string. So I can just continue weaving along now using my orange string and it will pull that pink string along until I get to the end. So once you finish a color or once you decide you wanna change colors, you can just tie your two strings together and finish it off that way. There we go. Now I do have this knot that is going to stick up, but once we are finished and our weaving starts to get bigger, you can always tuck your knot underneath the rest of your weaving and you won't be able to see it anymore. You can kind of hide it in there just like that. And then your color is just going to end up changing as you are going along. So now my pink has changed into my orange. And even though my color and my string has changed, I'm still following that same over under pattern as I am going along with this. So I'm going to continue weaving with my orange string until I run out. And then I'm going to stop there for today and we will finish our weaving next week. Now I did put other yarn in your art club folder. So there is some different textured yarn that feels a little bit different and looks a little bit different than what we are currently using to weave with. If you have any other yarn at home, you can always use that as well. Even if you have anything like ribbon or if you have any beads that you wanna put on your strings, you can include those in your weavings too. You can really get creative and decorate your weaving however you would like. There we go. So now I made it to the other side, again, looping back, keeping up with that under over pattern all the way. All right, that seems like a good place to stop. I'm going to leave my orange tail hanging there. Next time I'll pick a new color, tie it on and continue on with my weaving. I'm going to save this in my art club folder until next week. I know weaving can get a little bit tricky, so just try your best and I'm sure it will work out. Practice makes perfect. Try your best, have fun and get creative and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.